Imagine, if you will, you're having a conversation with someone who insists they hate Top Ramen. It's too crunchy, the psycho insists, and it's covered in this super salty powder. It seems unimaginable. And yet, there are people among us who do something very similar, buying a certain food stuff from the grocery store that's 90% made for you, but then not doing that final 10%, then insisting, no, I just don't like corn tortillas. They're too dry and they taste like cardboard. I've been saying it for years now, the number one thing people overlook when working with tortillas is that fresh or stale, flour or corn, they must be steamed right before consumption. Reheating flour tortillas is easy since they're made with fat in the dough. Toss them in a hot dry skillet for a couple seconds on each side until the surface looks toasted. The hard saturated fat inside will get soft and pliable and the flavor will improve from getting a little browned. Some people with gas stoves like to toast their tortillas over the open flame. For this video, I'm showing a plain old dry carbon steel pan. Corn tortillas are trickier than flour because corn tortillas don't have any fat in them. Thus, your reheating strategy needs to become more aggressive depending on how stale they are. Think of this like there's a staleness scale from one to five and then internalize this truth. The only time a corn tortilla is suitable for human consumption is when it is a zero on that scale. I'll show you how to get there. If you made fresh corn tortillas from scratch even just a couple hours ago, they will be a one on the dryness scale. They will have lost the essence of what makes them so spectacular. I know that sounds dramatic, but I also know that you've experienced something similar if you've ever ordered food delivery and the french fries were sitting in the box for an hour before they arrived. Some foods are made to be enjoyed right away. Thankfully, for these, it's an easy fix. Warm them up in a hot, dry pan, just like a flour tortilla, but hit them with a light spritz of water on each side. That water will steam back into the stale tortilla, replacing what steamed out as it cooled and dried. Now move up to a two on the dryness spectrum. You bought corn tortillas from a nice Mexican grocer. They were made fresh at the time, but after sitting on the store shelf all day, they're decidedly a little older than the homemade ones from before. In this scenario, paint a little water onto its surface using a little brush or your fingers. This applies more water than a light mist, but like a dad in a rainstorm, oh, we needed this. If your stack is more of a three out of five dryness, go ahead and dunk the whole thing in water for a half second. This dripping wet tortilla will hiss and squeal at you, but don't worry, you're not hurting it. In fact, if you did it right, it'll pass the crumple test. Something that once crumbled under pressure is now flexible enough to hold its shape, even under aggressive crushing force. Here's the worst case scenario you will ever face. A pack of factory made tortillas that spent God knows how many weeks in a warehouse, then on the store shelves, then on your countertop. These things have set the public perception of Mexican cuisine back by at least 50 years. Not only are they five out of five stale, but they're also delicate. Old factory made tortillas love to crack and crumble any chance they get, so they need lots of extra water, but they can't handle being doused and flipped lest they come apart at the machine imprinted seams. For a situation like this, you'll want to create a steamy environment that they can just sit and schwitz in undisturbed. Take a few sheets of paper towels or a cotton kitchen towel and run it under the sink to absorb water. Wring it out so it's still damp but not dripping wet. Make sure all the tortillas are separated from one another or you run the risk of fusing them together. Wrap the stack in the wet towel and microwave everything at full power for 30 to 60 seconds. The water in the towel will start to evaporate and steam will make its way into the tortillas. These will taste worse than any other tortilla shown today, but at least they won't suck all the moisture out of your mouth upon first bite. So now you're covered for anything on the spectrum of tortilla dryness. This is the part at the height of information overload where I get to reveal that you don't even really have to do that much analysis. You can do that microwave trick on any of the hypothetical tortillas I mentioned before. I just broke it down this way so that you understand that dire dryness demands drastic de-desiccation. The last thing that needs to be said is that even if you perfectly masterfully reheat a tortilla to its full pliable potential, it will die a quick death just as rapidly as a fresh one unless you keep it warm and steamy. The cheapest and easiest option is to wrap a cotton towel around your stack as you cook and eat. You won't have to buy anything new and it'll buy you like 15 minutes of flexibility. One step down in accessibility is a styrofoam tortilla holder. Styrofoam is an excellent insulator so everything inside will stay warm for a long long time and they're usually only like 99 cents. But I don't like them, even if they are effective. A, they're ugly as sin, and B, in this house we hate styrofoam. What an awful material. Unsurprisingly, my favorite style is the kind made from stoneware. These ceramic warmers are beautiful, a little pricey depending on where you get one, but the problem is that they're not porous, so you still have to line it with a cotton towel. Otherwise, condensation will build up all along the interior and sog things up over time. 
here's the wild card option, an insulated fabric tortilla warmer. It's vented so things don't get soaking wet inside, it's flexible so you can hang it on a wall or shove it into a drawer instead of needing precious cabinet space, and it's microwave safe so you can just stuff a stack of tortillas in there, nuke them for a minute, and throw the whole vessel onto a dinner table to keep them warm for up to a full hour. Pretty neat. And this one is from, uh, boy howdy, wouldn't you know it, Barkley, dinnerwithbarkley.com. Anyway, keep these instructions in your back pocket just in case you ever encounter someone who insists they hate corn tortillas. After all, you wouldn't spoon boxed cake mix into your mouth, you wouldn't crunch through a cold packet of Uncle Ben's ready rice, so why would you be making tacos with tortillas that are only mostly prepared? The answer is, you wouldn't. So promise me, you won't. Buen provecho. Factor has paid to be mentioned at the end of this video. Factor delivers nutritious meals to your door that get reheated in your microwave even more easily than a fussy stack of tortillas. You pick from a big menu that gets updated with at least 35 meals every week, and then you can add more, order less, or skip a whole week if you need to. I like to think I'm a genius for timing this ad read with the recent arrival of my first son. Everybody knows parents are busy, but Factor offers a way for me to have something to eat in two hands-off minutes that isn't some form of junk food loaded with preservatives and wacky macros. They even have smoothies and juices for when you truly have zero minutes to spare and just one free hand. It's a nice little cherry on top that they claim to offset 100% of their delivery emissions. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code NETSHACK50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Once again, that is factor75.com or code NETSHACK50 after clicking the link in this video's description.